Hey everybody, welcome to the average rate of change video. So in this video today what we're going to do is we are going to talk about average rate of change as well as we're going to talk about how to calculate it and we're going to talk about how to calculate it from either an equation format, we're going to talk about how to calculate it from a graph format, and we're going to talk about how to calculate it from a table format. We're going to talk about a couple of reasons why we use average rate of change um, as well as, again, what it's used for kind of like in real life. So, here we go. So why do we calculate average rate of change? Well, it lets us know on average what happened between a certain interval. So, for instance, it's used for unemployment rates. Like we can say, hey, on average, the unemployment rate between 2008 and 2012 was 8%. Or we can say, on average, the unemployment rate was 10% in the last decade. So see how I'm using a time period as well as in that time period, here was the average for whatever the data is that I'm explaining. Same thing for investment returns. I could say, hey, the last century investment returns for the NASDAQ were 8%. Or I can say something like, you know, for the S&P 500 in the last decade, so the last 10 years of an interval, the average return was 9%, something like that. Um, disease cases, like we can say, hey, in all of 2020, the average, um, the average amount of flu cases per month was, I don't know, 100. Um, or we could say, you know, in 2020, as of what is relevant right now, the average amount of COVID cases per month was whatever it is, thousands or so, whatever now. Um, a student's pass-fail rate in school, on average, this many students pass whatever course per year. Um, sports statistics average, which we'll get into, like the points per game average, your batting average, things like that that you hear, that's all calculated with average rate of change. And then really anything you want to know, the average rate over a certain time frame, okay? Over this time frame, on average, this happened. That's essentially what average rate of change will do for us. So we can calculate AROC, as I have it, average rate of change, from three different formats. From a graph, we find the slope, and I'm talking linear slope here, like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So find the slope between the two endpoints of your interval. So no matter how like nutso your graph is, so even if you have a graph that looks like blah, 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 blah. If I wanted to calculate the average rate of change from this point to this point, I would still just find the linear slope between those two points. Even though the middle of my graph looks like gargly goop, doesn't matter. That's still how we do it. We're just going to calculate the slope between the endpoints. So, and we'll see an example of that. From a function, so we're going to do f of b minus f of a over b minus a, um, where we want to find the average rate of change between this interval, this interval a and this interval b. It could be time period, could be whatever, right? And this is just also essentially just a slope formula, right? This is y2, this is y1, this would be x2, this would be x1, okay? So basically, average rate of change is basically finding slope. From a table, calculate again the slope. Between the two endpoints of the table, you want to find the AROC of. So, for instance, bloop. So, if I have an XY table and I have 1, 2, dot, 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 10, and I have 3, 7, dot, 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 2, if I wanted to find the average rate of change between x equals 2 and x equals 10, I just do our outputs. So 2 minus 7 over 10 minus 2, same thing. Find the slope between those two points, okay? So if you were really good at finding slope, you will also be really good at finding average rate of change. So let's see some more specific examples. So let's do AROC from a graph. And this specific graph that I have is the unemployment rate for people 16 years and older, quarterly average, seasonally adjusted, 1969 to 2015. I just want you to think about this. Is this is just the unemployment rate in a percent. Like this percent of people were out of work. And then here are the years, okay? So 
there's a lot of different things that I can do and a lot of questions that I can ask myself with this particular graph. Like for instance, if I wanted to see, um, like, I'm going to give myself away here, but the year that I was born, which was 1987, if I wanted to find the average unemployment rate between 1987 and, let's go, actually I have a sibling, my little sister was born in 1993, so I'll pick those two years. So what I want to find is I want to find average unemployment rate, employment rate between 1987 to 1993, right? Average rate of change, we always need an interval. You want to know the average rate of change between what and what. So you can't just look at this graph and you'd be like, calculate the average rate of change. You're like, well, where? <laughs> exactly. We need endpoints. So average rate of change, you always need to start in an endpoint. And what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the slope. Okay, this point here is the point 1993, comma, we'll call it 7.5. And, and this here is the point 1987, and that's at 6. So the slope, y2 minus y1, so 7.5. 5 minus 6 over 1993 minus 1987. So this will be 1.5 over 6. So the average rate of change here. So what was the average rate of unemployment change, right? The average unemployment rate change. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. The change between these two. Well, 1.5 over 6, 1.5 divided by 6, 0.25. So, and that's a positive 0.25. So, how do we interpret that? Well, from the year that I was born to the year that my sister was born, on average, unemployment rose 0.25% a year. So, the way that we interpret this answer, on average, unemployment rose, and we're going to say rose because it was positive, if it was negative we say fell, on average unemployment rose 0.25 percent percent per year between 1997 1987, sorry, and 1993. I was blending our birthdays. So finding average rate of change from a graph. You take the slope, okay? Take your leftmost endpoint, take your rightmost endpoint, do y2 minus y1. So again, that was my y2, that was my y1, that was my x1, and that was my x2. All right, and I just find the slope between those two points, and that's it. The tricky thing with ARC is how do I interpret it, right? I don't say, hey, from 1997, or 1997, yeah, I wish it was 10 years younger than I am, from 1987 to 1993 that the unemployment rate just rose 0.25%. No, what I want to say is I want to say on average it rose 0.25% per year. See that per year thing? That's what makes this an average. So on average. Average unemployment rose 0.25% per year between the years 1987 and 1993. Okay, so again, from a graph, y2 minus y1 over x2, x2 minus x1, like that. There we go. So that's from a graph. Now, what if we have a table? So the table that I have here today. This is a, if you guys recognize this at all with my headers here, this is, um, we can call him Mr. James, King James. 
These are LeBron James' stats over the years, from when he first entered the NBA in 2005 till the year 2020. So currently, so this was his current regular season um, stats. Here, you can see now he's with the Lakers, so the team, um, GP, games played, minutes, points, field goals made, field goals attempted, field goals percentage, three-pointers made, three points attempted, and three-pointer percentage. So some scoring stats I have here. So what if what about if I want to find, hey, on average, how did he do per year uh, with a particular stat? So let's look at the games played. So I'm going to take this column. So I'm going to look at games played. So what if I have a question? I'm going to say, hey, on average, on average, how many games? did LeBron James play per year between, right, because we need an interval, between, we'll call it 2005, and his current year, which is 2020. 2020. So I can answer this with an average rate of change, right? So this is just on average, how many games did he play per year between 2005 and 2020? Well, what I need to know is I need to know his stats for 2005. And I need to know his stats for 2020. So on average, how many games uh, did he play per year? So on average, there what I want to know is I want to know on average did he start playing more games per year did he start playing less games per year so on average how did his game play change over the years did he start playing more or over the years did he actually start playing less as you can see when he started out with Cleveland in 2005 he actually played more games per in that year he played 79 and then with the LA Lakers in 2020, he's kind of old guy now, so he's play less. He only played 67. So let's say on a, let's see on average per year his game play kind of rate of decline, and that's what we're going to figure out. So again, we're going to do a y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay, with these points, and y2 is going to be 67. Um, y1 is going to be 79, x2 is going to be 2020, and x1 is going to be the first year 2005. So y2, so 67 minus 79 over uh, 2020 minus 2005. So what do we get here? So 67 minus 79 over, and this was over his 15 years, so that's negative 12 over 15. So let's reduce it to make it look a little easier. So divide by 3. There we go. So divide by three. Sorry, I did a four. Divide by three. This. So what does this mean? So this would be our average rate of change. So on average, what this negative four fifths means is that on average, every year he played four fifths less of a game, right? Because he started off playing seventy nine games and he ended up playing 67 games. So there was a decline. And so on average, what was his decline? Well, on average, it looks like he played four-fifths less of a game every year, which doesn't really make sense because how do you play four-fifths of a game? But it's just a stat. So on average, LeBron James has played four-fifths of a game less every year, 
because now he's only playing 67 games out of the year. And you can kind of see as you look, played a lot of games that year, but it goes up and down, right? Up and down, up and down, down, up, up, down, up, down, really up, really down, and then up a little more, right? So it's fluctuating. That's why we want to say, hey, on average, what's what's happening with his gameplay? Is on average, is he playing more games every year? Or on average, is he playing less games per year? And what can we say about that? Well, again, in this particular case, we can say that Mr. James, King James, what have you, is playing on average four-fifths less a game every single year. And with that, we could even make a projection depending on how long he continues playing. So average rate of game, average rate of change from a table. Do your y2 minus y1. So if that was our x. That was our x2. This is our y2. This is our y1 here. Your outputs are always your y's. Your inputs are always your x. Okay. Calculate literally your slope from your last endpoint and your first endpoint. So the last thing we have. So what about from an equation? So from an equation, use this color. From an equation, we want to use basically slope again. So finding average rate of change really boils down to slope, right? We can find slope of a graph. We can find slope from a table. We can also find slope from an equation. So where x is between b and a. So here's our formula: f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This is also slope. Think of this as y2, think of this as y1, think of that as x2, think of that as x1, right? This is still slope, okay? So the equation I have for you is modeled um, an investment return. So suppose you initially invest $1,000, okay? And you have an average rate of return per year of 0 0.09, or sorry, 0.9%, which our decimal is 0 0.09. Okay, and then depends on how many years you leave this investment in the bank, right? So this is an exponential, so just as a kind of picture of this, so we're going to start at zero, oops, sorry, we're going to start at a thousand, and this thing's going to go like that over time. And in this particular case, since you're modeling real world stuff, we don't have negative because we don't have negative years, but if we were just in math world where negative years make sense, our, our graph would look something like this, okay? So just know it's going to start slow, it's going to start slow, and then it's going to skyrocket after a certain amount of time. So let's say we invest this money. Let's say we have a great aunt or something who put $1,000 in the bank for us upon her untimely demise. So great aunt puts $1,000 in the bank, and you don't find out about it until 30 years later. So invested... $1,000 at 9% return for 30 years. So what do we want to say? We say, hey, okay, well, what about on average? So about on average, how was my money changing every year? So on average... How did investment grow per year between, so years 1 to 30? So, you're a very generous aunt, threw $1,000 in the bank at a 9% return, and you didn't find out about it until 30 years later. So on average, how much did your investment grow every year? Well, on year one, so year one, so year one, we're actually going to think of it as year zero. So as year zero, when your great aunt invested, you had, uh, let's go time, money. And let me actually start over. Let's go from the start of the investment. So at time zero, there was $1,000 in the bank, right? So the great aunt, $1,000. No growth has happened yet. And then you found the money 30 years later. Well, 30 years later, how much did you have? 
Well, 1,000 e to the 0 0.09 times 30. So what is that equal? So let's say, so if you have $1,000 in the bank, and you just let it grow, you would have... 14,880 dollars. So, not so bad, right? So, but like I said again, this thing looked like that. Okay? So, on average though, from 0 to 30, what was our growth of money every year? So, again, we're going to go F of B, minus f of a over b minus a. So in this case, what that's going to look like, since we want to go 0 to 30, f of b is f of 30 minus f of 0, right? End point minus starting point over 30 minus 0. What is f of 30? f of 30 is the amount of money that this investment accumulated after 30 years. So that was the 14000 880. F of zero is how much money was originally invested. That's a thousand dollars. Over 30 minus zero, which is 30. So the time span of the investment here. Okay. So this is going to be 13,880 divided by 30. So 462. And we'll round up. So on average, your investment grew by $463 per year between the years 0 and 30. So the average rate of change of your investment was a positive $463. Not so bad from not knowing that you had a great aunt that invested some money for you, right? So this is all just applications of what these equations means. However, if you just want to very like straightforward, be like, okay, well, here's my equation and I need to calculate average rate of change between, you know, five and 10. It's this, plug in your, your last endpoint to your function minus plug in your first endpoint to your function over last endpoint minus first endpoint. And it's that, it. that's that simple. F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Okay. So um, that's everything I have for you for this particular video. So what we went over, we went over average rate of change, and we learned how to calculate it if we see a graph. We do slope. We learned how to calculate it if you see a table. Same thing, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we also saw what to do if you need to calculate the AROC from an equation, f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which also just boils down to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay? Basically, here's your endpoints. Calculate the slope of the straight line that goes through them, and that's it. That's really all you need for average rate of change. Grab your endpoints. It doesn't matter what's happening in between. Grab those endpoints and then calculate the slope between those endpoints, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.